Titans Season 4. This is the spoiler review. I have a review on my blog, soundedbetteremyhead.com. Um, try to keep it as spoiler free as I could. You know, it's kind of hard when you're doing a whole season of a show. Um, I ended up giving this season a 2 out of 5. It just really wasn't anything that great. Um, Titans as a whole it just never was that great as well. There were, there were moments where you could see a really good show looking like it was going to like come into existence and then just the writing or whatever would just take a dip and it just go back to kind of cheesy. Just, I said just a couple times like there was a really good show buried in there and it just couldn't quite make its way out. Um, I think the biggest problem is the, the plot was just mediocre. You had the whole magic villains based thing and it's like a lot of the magic stuff so poorly defined is this kind of random whatever they need to tell the story is what the bad guys can do power wise and some of the good guys um they did a good job of making sebastian pretty sympathetic and relatively likable um just but the turn into a bad guy was just kind of half-assed done and it was in stops and starts like he's he's a good guy trying to be pressured he's getting pressured to being a bad guy and the titans step in and they look like they convince him to be a good guy and then the bad guys get him and they try to make him bad but then he goes try to be good again and then he's bad again and then he's kind of neutral but he starts kind of acting like a bad guy again and using his evil video game to do something to people that was kind of vague and then he kind of just went overboard and became like flat out like the total villain villain um, as I said, just, not only was the story arc not well that done, that well done, but the, the story just kind of stopped and go and stopped and go, and it's like well, well, it just felt like it had no momentum. And the entire season was hurt by the fact that we got the first six episodes, and then it took at least a couple month long break, and then we got the next set of episodes. So I think it killed the momentum completely. Uh, a lot of the character arcs were nothing special. I mean, uh, Nightwing didn't get all that much to do. Again, as far as his character arc, it was just a very subtle build to him and Starfire being a couple, which didn't even pan off that, it wasn't even that blatantly well done in the end. Like, I, honestly, I think they could have went with a I love you moment. It, it really kind of, you know, sealed the deal for that storyline. I mean, they really hinted at these futures where they had a child together, and they just, just kind of got away from that, I think, the, the way they ended it. Starfire herself, not much, just about her fulfilling this prophecy it's a little bit of a tie back to season one in a way where she was trying to stop raven but it, it just it was just wasn't that great um raven herself didn't have that much going on she had this thing where she's bothered by darkness she gets you know becomes white white raven and that was really the her the end of her arc and that was at the end of the, you know that was at the mid-season break and after that she didn't really do much else they had a lot of stuff where they're kind of setting up her as, and, and Gar as being like kind of like this cute little couple kind of thing, and they got away from that. Like when it ended, I was like, "Wait, are they a couple or not a couple?" Um, Gar did have a pretty significant storyline. It was really vague to him, and kind of dipping in and out of the red, and a lot of weird shit happening. Uh, eventually, they basically more or less got all laid out to you like late in the season, but not that much really came of it. Like him getting these this this ability didn't really help him out in the end. Like, it didn't make a difference in stopping Sebastian. And it saved the team briefly, but then it just just it just it kind of got weird and it didn't really amount to nothing. Um, the, probably the meatiest storyline would be uh, Superboys. You know, finally meeting Lex Luthor, trying to get to know him. Then they hit... It was a little vague if it was the magic attack that made him kind of turn darker and lean more into that Luther heritage or it was just he just kind of did it on his own like it really wasn't as clear as it could have been I don't know if that was intentional a lot or not but I didn't really care for the storyline that much I know where they were going with it it was at least giving up something to do and kind of kind of showing like you know what happens if someone that's half Luther half Superman kind of leans toward that Luther side so it was interesting I just didn't really like it that much but it was a decent storyline for him like I said, I've already talked about uh, Brother Blood stuff. Um, the secondary villain, I think his mom was a better villain overall. That she just kind of like got taken off the board near the end. Um, 
as the season went on, they started hyping up Trigon coming back, and then that was that was like a non-factor, which again it was you're kind of tying back to the first season with that. Uh, the show overall looked decent still, you know. Um, some of the CGI can be kind of wonky at times, but it's it's usually not that bad. The action scenes were so so. There were some okay ones. Um, also, probably like I mentioned, yeah, Tim Drake this season. He had a kind of a wonky storyline. It's just trying to train to be like a titan, but I just don't think the training stuff was really that great. So his superhero arc was a little mediocre. I mean, it was nice to see him finally being able to kick ass, but you know, with some of the threats they were going with, just you basically had two Robins on the team again, which is what you kind of had early on when you had Nightwing and um, Jason Todd. But they really focus more on Tim Drake's romantic life. I don't believe it's, he's gay in the comics. I think they changed that for the show. I mean, that's it, fine, whatever. I think they treated it, they didn't treat it weird. They just treated it like any other relationship, which is which was okay, that's fine. But, um... I don't think like there's too much else to say about this season. Like I said, just, I think it was one of the, probably one of the weaker seasons. I think the, the thing season one was actually kind of weak just because they didn't know what kind of show they wanted it to be. And I think season two, they started finding their footing. Season three, more of the same. And then season four, I think they just... I just don't think any of the Brother Blood stuff worked. And I don't think any of this character stuff was as strong. Um, so, yeah. And that's... that's the that show's done. It's... Um, I think it's time to go through my notes, see if there's anything else I wanted to mention. Um, if you've seen my last video, I'm temporarily staying with some family, so this is the temporary setup for my recordings. I don't know, I think there's a ceiling fan on, it might cut, the, it might be hard to hear the audio, I'm not sure. I, there was no printer set up over here, so I usually print my little note sheet out and can't do that, so I'm just going to read them off my laptop here and see what's worth mentioning. Um, that was weird that... Apparently only a couple days passed since the last season. Like, you know, it was a, in our time, it was a pretty significant time jump. So this is say, yeah, it's been a couple days. I thought that was kind of weird. Um, it was nice to see that Beast Boy did pretty much level up this season, even with outside of the whole stuff with the red, that he was able to transform into more and more, you know, animals. So that was cool. Um, I thought the evil base for the bad guys looked lame. Like, the statue with the glowing eyes just looked cheap as shit. It wasn't much better than, like, an old Star Trek, you know, background god you know, deity that you would see, you know, telling the natives of a planet what to do, and Kirk had to, like, talk him out of it. Um, thought Luther was decent, you know, we didn't get very much of him, and I was actually pretty surprised they took him out in the second episode. I thought for sure he had a master plan, and he would show up again, but no, he, they actually killed him. Uh, they made this big fuss about how special Gar's new superhero suit was. It looked good, but I don't know what was special about it that, you know, somehow let him change, and the suit stayed on, stayed, it came back, I don't know, it was weird. There was a lot of talk about Starfire, like, Oh, she's only using eight percent of her power, or she's got. They say in the finale, she's more powerful than like all these like millions of suns or whatever. But if she's that strong, like she didn't come off that strong. Like she should have been able to mop the floor with any bad guys they came up against, and you know she more or less got her you know smacked around like the rest of the team did. I mean, you had the same thing with Superboy. He's basically Superman level, and he should be able to take out most of the bad guys by himself, and he he generally didn't. I know you're trying to like make the show interesting and not have all the heroes like just kick all the bad guys asses but it just kind of bugs you when they say she's that powerful and you just don't see it most of the time uh you move on to the second episode they had this weird thing was this guy in this like bird mask that was killing people then it's he died but he was actually i guess he was part of the cult like it was so feels so unreal it was like a different show like i looked back at these notes i'm like wait was this the same show like, it would just seem kind of random now in retrospect. For, would you say, hindsight? One of the two. Um, that was weird that Luther got killed, and everyone just immediately assumed that a, a superhero, Superboy, that's, you know, a, a known hero that everybody likes, like, yeah, he probably killed him, and then they lock him up. And, like, the guy's, like I said, he's Superman-level powers, but what they, they happened to Luther didn't look anything like what a Superman would, you know, do to somebody. Um, and then I thought there'd be like a long stretch where he was in jail and they kind of like That was like part of the storyline, but he got out pretty quick again Then they fought the brother brother's mom and he kicked the whole team's ass like it was nothing and they, Then she was you know couldn't stop. I don't know. It was weird They just they set up with this big threat that she could take out the team by herself And then she got even more powerful, but it never came back to that 
a blood spider that they had in the third episode I thought looked kind of weak. They did this kind of cheesy thing that Titans likes to do where you introduce a character, and other shows do it, but they introduce a character and he's got this whole happy existence going on and then the bad guys murder him. It's, I said CW would do it sometimes too with the uh, like the Flash and the Arrow and all that, but they, it seems like Titan does it a little bit darker. And took to the third episode, but at least Gar started telling people like, hey, something, something weird going on. So I'm glad they didn't keep that running too long. I thought Tim Drake's training montages were just goofy. Like, I don't know. The, he was like doing some kind of weird VR fighting and just it just looked corny. Didn't feel like it was really he was really learning anything doing that. Then now there's some new Tamaranian prophecy that we didn't know about before, I guess. With about some blood moon. Even though you know the Rachel thing was supposed to be the prophecy in the season one and there was never any blood moon that I remember. I mean, maybe there was, it's been a long time. And that came up too. There was they started talking about this whole organization that these these brother bloods cult is and it's like I don't remember any of this from season one I don't remember how this was set up I, it was so long ago um the zombies death stroke was mediocre like I said you should they would have been great if they had the actor underneath or maybe even if even if it just voiced it I know he's just a zombie and she was basically just pulling the strings but just having some stunt man just didn't cut it maybe they lost all the coolness factor of having him back I think I said, then it got weird with Connor because then he's like trying to tell was he under some kind of spell or was he just acting stupid like he wasn't telling people that he felt like shit. Um, so that was kind of weird. Uh, then you get to episode five, the, the killer snake comes out, and for some reason Tim Drake thinks he could take it out, which oddly enough he did, even though this thing was like ridiculously deadly. Uh, for a while, it seemed like there was only, like, one other person working at Star Labs, which is kind of weird, because then in the finale, like, there was a whole shit ton of people, and apparently all of them died, but Bernard. I'm kind of glad that the evil uh, Connor got brought out, you know, busted early, so I didn't want to go... This just felt like I didn't want that storyline to go on too much longer, so I'm kind of glad he got... But I also kind of wish he got away first, before they immediately caught him and tried to cure him. And the whole thing with the Gar becoming like a virus, but like then he was supposed to multiply, but wouldn't that mean there was multiple Gars somehow? And then there was like no real good explanation of how they turn him back to normal. It, was, it just kind of was like, oh, now he's normal again. Like it was just kind of weird. I, you know, it was an okay concept, but it was executed like pretty poorly. And I said, that's, that's the point where the show kind of loses me. It was like, okay, you're doing good till there. Uh, the flashback stuff with Blood of Brother Blood's mom was alright. Just her taking out her best friend to, to be Trigon's bride, whatever. It was, at least you get some backstory on her. You know. What her deal was, why she's so psycho. Thought it was pretty crazy that they said they went with a bald Connor, which I said that, that rolled into the whole wannabe Luther thing. I'm glad they did reference. I think we've seen bits and pieces before, like, we're either Dick and or Corey or both of them had visions about them having a daughter they did this weird thing where they, there was like this empty park and I, I don't I think it was I'm not sure what it was supposed to represent but that was supposed to be this ooh, scary moment and like I don't that didn't that was just stupid um, some of the CGI they did the CGI gorillas thing it looked mediocre but I thought they did a good job at least matching the lighting um I was really starting to like Jinx. And then they got her in action. She had a pretty cool costume. Then they killed her. Um, for some reason, was, there was a thing where Brother Blood had to go in this blood that looked like super fake. Um, I don't know about the White Raven thing in the comics, but either way, it was spoiled for me before I even had a chance to watch the episode. Like, they already posted pictures online of her in the white costume. And that was your mid season. That was episode six. And then you come back, the shot of Brother Blood coming out of the blood looks super fake. I don't know why they had, they had to do it like that where it looks so, so crappy. It's weird that the team just basically vanished for like six hours and came back. Uh, Dick's friend that was supposed to translate that old Tamaranian stuff was just extra kooky. It's weird that apparently the Tamaranians have a word in their language for Klingon. I don't know why they would know Star Trek. Um, and they, they, then they solved all their like codes and stuff like super easy. Um, and then the Dick's, Dick's friend was intentionally vague, where she never said Corey was going to die, even though they all interpreted it that. But I thought it was pretty clear that they just meant she was going to change. And that, that they were just trying to trick the audience. Then they had the thing where they were stuck in their town, and when they tried to leave it, like, they couldn't. 
when she was when they were driving it looked kind of stupid but there was a point where dick was walking and there's how the road was kind of stretching or whatever i thought that actually looked pretty cool uh so I'm surprised that they like immediately got the horn in episode eight like it's like oh here's a horn for trigon and that was it i thought that would be this thing where the titans are trying to beat him to get to the horn they had the whole thing where like the one guy was made himself deaf and his daughter was born that way or had been like that since a little girl yet they spoke super clear and they were like the best lip readers on the planet. Like you would never have known that they were like both deaf the way that, you know, they acted. And then it was kind of weird. Like this, they had these fake looking birds from number one. And then the, I guess the sheriff figured out to follow the birds and he'd find Raven, but it was all done off camera. So it's just like she was gone. So it made it look like she just got up and left. And then later on, it's like, oh no, no, they captured her. And then you suffer like Dick Grayson's like such a badass, but like a couple of like, a couple of these cops just took him out like pretty easily. And then later on, he kicked out you know, a bunch of cops' asses, and he, I think he even gave one guy F5. Uh, I thought the Raven trying to talk to those two guards out of killing her was it's kind of funny because this is the, the, way, the, the way they are arguing, the one guy didn't want to do it. Um, they actually used a lot of oldie songs in the in that small town section. That had to cost the show some money. Dick did mention that they lost their memory. He had an idea how to keep, keep them, but he got it from Batman. I just thought that was cool that Batman would have a plan like that because in the books, he did have this thing where he... If nothing else, he had this like backup identity to kind of keep him going if he ever lost his mind. Um, then they get to the evil magic radio station, and there was this kind of random dude hooked, hooked up to like machines and blood, and I don't know what he was. Was he magic? Was he telepath? Like I don't know who the hell he was. And was he part of the cult? Even it was so kind of vague. It's like oh, let's just torture him a little bit and kill like you know hit the kill switches, and then he just died. Um, the whole stuff with Gar was kind of weird. Like, the, I thought the lion bat thing looked mediocre. Uh, the guy he was talking to, I, I guess he's maybe based on a DC character. I tried to kind of look it up afterwards. I'm not even sure he was a, a character. Although I'm pretty sure we did catch a glimpse of Animal Man, Animal Man hanging out. Either way, this guy came off like a so-so like Black Panther. I said all the stuff with the red was just kind of whatever. I honestly didn't feel like we learned that much about Gar, or he really learned much from all these uh, these visions. Then they had the whole weird thing where he went into the red, and he started just basically seeing clips of like other DC shows. And for a minute, I thought we were actually going to see Barry Allen like show up, which would have been pretty cool. But I guess that was just a clip from the show. And we got like a minute of the Star Girl. I thought we were going to get so much more. We're like, okay, he's going to interact with Star Girl. It could be interesting. And then he dipped on her, then ended up with the Doom Patrol, and I forgot. Cyborg wasn't part of the Doom Patrol in the Titans universe because the Doom Patrol Titan, Doom Patrol characters and the Doom Patrol show are they're different reality. It's not the same characters. It's, it's confusing. But apparently they both had a cyborg and played by the same actor. But it was kind of nice because they hadn't mentioned really Doom Patrol or Chief, I think, in a long time. So I'm glad that at least they brought that stuff back up again for, for Gar's background. And they had weird stuff like you know they got the they got the horn and you think they're just they should immediately blow the horn and end the world or whatever they got to do but for some reason brother blood just wanders off and goes out to dinner and has a coffee and then i don't know i didn't feel like superboy is as suave he was he's supposed to be like he's supposed to be kind of doing his best lex luther you know sweet talking i just never felt like it worked uh brother blood's mom went like over the top like yelling at him and being like super bitchy all of a sudden and then he charred her which, and I wasn't even that surprised that she popped back up at the end, uh, still alive. They had, then they had the weird thing where Raven at one point somehow knew that if she got hurt by Brother Blood, he'd get hurt too. Like, I don't know how she suddenly knew that if they tried to hurt each other at that point. Like, the other I, the other one would get hurt, but then they kind of got said it was only in the town, but then it wasn't. It, it was kind of half ass. Then again, they set up Sebastian to be like, all right, he's, he's evil. He, it's, he's whatever and then he just kind of went back to like oh, i'm gonna make my video game and then he had that, that weird thing where you like did magic on it and now it's like i'm not even sure what's supposed to be doing the people like one minute they may sound like everyone was like having an ill effect but then it kind of looked like it was only bernard that had a bad effect and then when the game was shut down the media is kind of like oh the game was a flop why did they, no, they shut it down but didn't they they really mentioned that like people were like going into comas from it like it was just more like haha like luther corp you know screwed up and the joke's on them um, and then they did the big thing where, like, they were taking this evil connection out of Rachel that she had to Sebastian. And it took physical form. It was just a weird-looking dude in a suit with, like, half-ass zombie makeup. And they just did 
weird shaky cam effects to make it look scary. And that, that was just really nothing. It's just Dick walking around looking for him and then eventually he finally gets to stab him. I was glad to see Jason Todd back. You know, his, I love you know, his cranky ass, you know. He brought a little, little liveliness back to the show. Kind of had a feeling that something was up, that he was trying to kind of train uh, Tim, but um, it was okay sequence. Like I said, it was interesting seeing the two Robins meet. And it was actually a pretty good costume for Tim Drake. They had a weird thing where, like, Mercy deleted all these files, but then they got there, like, oh, no, they're, they're not deleted yet. Like, I guess... I guess they were still in the recycle bin. I don't know what, but they just found all the files anyways. Uh, I was a little surprised that they killed Superboy in that episode, but especially coming up in the end, I thought that maybe they really did. Then it looked like they were going to take out Brother Blood, but you knew it wasn't going to work because they didn't charge the thing enough, but then apparently just gave him some goofy-looking costume where he kind of looked like the Hobgoblin. I was a little confused that he still blew the horn because I thought, like, you know, he was in this big position of power to be like the big bad guy or whatever. And like, why would he call it Trigon? But then apparently he knew he could kill him pretty easily, even though Trigon's supposed to be like this super badass. And then he just figured he'd drink from his heart because, I don't know, it seemed like a good idea. And then it kind of got weird at that point that like they all decided we're going to call him, like, stop calling him Sebastian. We're only going to call him, call him Blood, Brother Blood. So I, I, I just thought that was kind of weird. It was at some point, it was like, all right, I'm just waiting for Superboy to come make this, like, big dramatic you know re-emergence and it really wasn't that dramatic he like shot him with some heat vision and then they threw him against some electrical thing and then they tried to make it make you think that Corey was going to die but i already assumed earlier she wasn't so i felt like no emotion from it and really the only one that seemed that sad was dick and gar and then they show this weird random flashback to christmas for some reason and then starfire comes back basically normal it just looks like she has her old powers back and like I said, I was expecting like I, like I love you or something like to really kind of nail that moment, and they just, we didn't really get it. And then we did this weird scene where like everybody's like, oh, we're all going to do our separate things, and none of it seemed that interesting. And for some reason, they ended up with this really odd shot of like Superboy trying to like fly, and he looked like the greatest American hero if you're old enough to remember that show. And like I don't remember that he couldn't fly. And like I thought that you know, it's it's, just, it's one of those things where it's like. I just don't remember it. I don't remember that, any dialogue. Like, he can't fly, but he just runs really fast. There probably was something back when he got introduced, but I forgot about it at this point. But that's about it. I probably went on way too long about the show. Like I said, it, it, it had, there was potential there, and then once in a while you would see that start to come out, and then it just it just got muddied, and just I, it just never was that great. You know, it just had its, had, had its moments, but that's about it. But um, like I said, there's a, another version of this review up on my blog. I have other reviews on there. I got some comic strips. And that's all at soundabettermyhead.com. So, you know, check it out if you want to. And thanks for watching.